Hi, I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Singleton Museum of Fine Art in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And today we're going to look at a piece of Gibbs called Lovelink. Now, this is one of his really abstract pieces. And you have to know that early on in his career, Gibb was doing a lot of really abstract stuff, as well as a lot of really spiritual stuff. And this is an example of it. And the fact is, people weren't ready for it. He said, man, you couldn't give that stuff away. And so these pieces languished in the mold shops and foundries or in the back room. Sometimes he would drag them around as waxes because he couldn't afford to pour them. And over time, gradually, people became exposed to them and then he could afford to pour them and so on. So this is one of those pieces we're talking about probably coming from into the 60s. And what it is, is a piece about the Holocaust. Gibb was profoundly affected by the Holocaust. He would have been about 10 years old when word of that came back from Europe in World War II and reached America. And he was stunned. He was devastated. He couldn't believe it. He used to say, you know, 50, 60 years on, he was still almost speechless. It was so, it hurt him so badly. He would say, how in the F can we do that to each other? What, what's wrong with this? How is that even possible? He couldn't understand it. And it triggered him to do a series of art on the Holocaust. One of them was panels that he called Desecration of the Jews. And it ultimately was purchased by his friend Clara Stern for her sister, Golda Meir, who was Prime Minister of Israel. And when Golda died, she left it to the State of Israel and is now in Yad Vashem, along with one of the love links. Yad Vashem being the World Holocaust Memorial. So to put this in a time frame, Gibb comes back from Italy. He's been on a Fulbright at the Academia in Florence, studying with master sculptors. He comes back to the US. He decides, you know, he's got a safe job. That's how he got a Fulbright. He's teaching, right? And so he got a Fulbright to study abroad for a year. And he has this nice safe job with benefits and everything, and he throws it all out. He says, you know, if I'm gonna be an artist, I gotta be an artist. How can I teach it if I don't practice it? So they open this little gallery called the East Bank Gallery. They live upstairs. And out in back is a homemade foundry called Hercules that Gibb made out of recycled pizza ovens. And that's where he and his brother Jerry and a friend named Skip do the pouring, do the casting of this bronze. So one day Shelly comes down from, up, from the upstairs apartment and she finds that Gibb has taken all of her Barbie dolls and he's nailed them to wooden crosses and he's turned his acetylene torch on them. She said, it was horrifying. They're melted, their hair is frizz, they're, they're sagging and slumping. And, and Gibb said, look, this is what's going on in the world. You have to pay attention to it, you have to understand it, and you have to make it better. Shelley said, so that was really my first art lesson. You have to see the world as it is, you have to confront it, you have to address it, and you have to make it better. That's the work of an artist. And that was why Gibb did his art. Gibb did his art because his hope was to open people's hearts so that there wouldn't be any more holocausts. There wouldn't be any more events like that. We wouldn't kill each other. That was his greatest dream in life. So Love Link, I said, is a tough one. What you have is two figures interlocked on the way to the gas chamber. They're going to the end together. At that point, all they have is each other. The shape is the infinity symbol, and it's to signify that they will be together forever. That love is infinite, that it ultimately conquers evil, and that it transcends even death. For the Gibbs Singleton Museum, I'm John Geckler. Thanks for tuning in.